Lane, I know a lot has been made of, of the quarterback room uh, this, this offseason. Are you able to tell us if this is a, an open competition? What, what would you consider uh, the state of the quarterback room? Yeah, I'd say it's a really competitive room. Uh, and it's in a much better shape, which is our goal as a staff for an entire roster, but each position group to try to make them more competitive and more balanced throughout uh, each year. And that room is uh, by far the best it's been since we've been here. And so we're excited about camp coming up to see these guys fully healthy um, compete. How would you assess kind of Jackson's attitude ever since, you know, bringing in Spencer Sanders and other talent? Because you said how much he's improved in the spring, but his attitude towards, you know, that room getting more crowded. Yeah, I think Jackson's done an amazing job. He had a great spring uh, from a play standpoint, from a leadership standpoint, from improvement, uh, throwing the ball uh, better than he ever has. So I think he's going to he's gonna have a great camp. Austin Simmons is in a pretty unique situation. Um, when he went up to class, was that a conversation you all had, or was he just kind of like, hey, Coach, I'm, I'm going to be here this fall? No, there was a lot of conversations with that. explored that option and they had kind of already been on track to do that at another school. So um, they were headed that direction, but still it was open. They had not reclassified yet. It was still open that he could stay. So uh, there, there were a lot of conversations. We're excited he decided to come. Uh, very talented player with tremendous upside and a uh, great baseball player also. Well, I know it was around those times last year, you were talking about trying to create a, a cohesive culture, especially kind of during that fall period. When you look back on, you know, this, you know, the fall period 22 and going into this one, do you approach it any differently or you kind of you know, Yeah, I don't have that exact answer. I think that, and I said this, I believe at the beginning of free agency when this whole thing was set up that, you know, you're gonna have some culture challenges uh, as you flip your roster like this some of it's in control, some of it's out of control because kids leave. So it's not ideal to, you know, have 40 scholarships of your 85 guys brand new. But it is what it is. It was a challenge last year, one that um, I don't think I handled well at the end. I kind of, I think at this time a year ago, probably jinxed myself in saying, you know, when you have culture issues, like just like when you you know, in professional sports like the NBA, you see these dream teams put together. And when a season doesn't start go go well, it's very challenging for them to play really well. And I think that happened some with us with, I think, what, eight and one with the ball going in to potentially go to nine and one to beat Alabama. And, um, and then we lose four straight. So I think that that's, that's a big challenge um, when you have so many new guys, once things don't go the way that they want them to go, keeping everybody together because you don't have years of that team being together. You said that's a challenge, but have there been you know other ways of, of navigating this that have gotten kind of easier for you in this whole era of free agency? Like, have you adjusted at all? You think and um, and yeah, how has that all gone? Like you kind of mentioned some of it there. But. Yeah, the the great part is coaches can fill needs quicker than before, obviously. So <clears throat> to have kind of free agency twice a year really um, the good part of that is to be able to fill voids quicker than you used to be able to and it would take a lot longer if you lost a lot of players that year to the draft or injury or there weren't many transfers back then but you know it took you longer to build those spots because you had to do it basically through high school kids or maybe junior college so there obviously is good and bad uh, to it Having had time to kind of assess and look back at the spring, how do you feel the status kind of the defense overall is heading into fall with just Golden now maybe fully installing what he wants to do? Yeah, I think we have a lot of work to do there. We had some significant players injured in the spring, um, including Cedric, who's here today, so and a lot of new staff over there. So that that's a, a huge challenge for us in this camp coming up. Just to get everything installed, get all the moving parts, and get figured out who we're going to play. I know you said this spring that one of your goals there was to kind of attack the portal, get some personnel, and kind of facilitate that change in system. Do you feel like you needed, you did what you needed to do there? Um, what specific area? Uh, just the defense in general. Um, yeah, I mean we we were. Pretty
pretty tireless at looking everywhere um, because we had a lot of needs and a lot of number issues over there, um, especially in the back end with transfers and departures. So um, there's a lot of new people, um, including some that you know weren't here and we knew him from the spring. So that's going to be a big challenge for putting all those pieces together. You brought in some top recruits out of the state of Mississippi, Aiden Williams and Terry and Perkins. Do you see a situation where those guys are playing pretty early? And where do you see Perkins fitting in? You know, in what position? Yeah, the, both those guys, we hope that they play this year and have significant roles. Uh, they're both really talented. They both uh, kind of hit the ground running here in the off season, trying to learn everything. And, um, and both are at a position of need. So we have very high expectations for both of them. Where do you expect Perkins to play? Linebacker. How important in your past you really relied on, like when you had Derrick Henry at Alabama, you really used him, say, with Amari Cooper, but with uh, Quinshawn, is he the kind of guy that you can put a large portion of the offensive load on his back and sort of let him carry it? Yeah, I think we saw that, which is pretty amazing for a true freshman um, to be able to carry as much as anything more than anybody in the SEC. So um, we've kind of done that. Not to the extent, you know, Derek's, I think, all-time SEC leading carries that year. Um, but uh, I think if we have to, we could do it. What's the status of the Xavier? I know Austin Burke he put up that release yesterday. Just had y'all had talks, or what kind of, where's that stand? Yeah, we've been on top of that. Um, those are internal matters, and um, when we get discipline and get all the information in, um, you know, we go from there. You had a lot of guys. You had a lot of guys limited in the spring, or even out in the spring. Spencer was kind of halfway. How are you from a health standpoint going into camp? Uh, there's still some issues there. Um, you know, give you a full report that first day, but um, you know, Spencer's 100%, uh, which he looked really good as you guys saw in the spring game, and so we're excited about that because he was not 100%, you know, during spring ball. You talk about uh, Quinn Sean and. You always talk about rat boys in the Nick Saban deal. And with a guy like that, I mean, there's got to be a ton of that everywhere. Have you had any kind of conversations with him about that? Any advice on how to deal with it? And um, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I think that that's always a challenge. Um, coaches, let alone players, uh, young age when they get a lot and a lot of success. And I think now because of NIL, that challenge is even bigger, you know, um, now you're giving kids money early on also, um, on top of all the credit and everyone telling them how great they are and the records and all those things. So that is a really big challenge. And even though he's mature and has done a great job, we have to stay on top of that because that's that's just, that's all over. I mean, you just study when, when people get a lot really early. Um, and I don't worry about with him. I was just thinking on the plane over, you know, these NILs are, getting so big for the kids, which is great, but you know, there is a concern too. If you have everything, then what are you really working for? And that won't be some of the kids because it won't matter because of their drive, but you know, that happens in a lot of people. So um, I think there's a little concern with that too, because one of their big motives to playing well, to working really hard is to get to the NFL to make the money. So, but it is what it is. Talking more about character, I know that there are some players that aren't playing all the time, but they're really leading people in the locker room. Is there someone you've seen break out in practices recently that's just really leading others well? Um, I think Eli Acker does a great job for us of um, someone who started at times for us and um, rotated in, but really does a great job with our guys um, leading in the offseason. Talking about leadership, how, how has Jackson evolved kind of in the last year in, in that regard? Well, Jackson's a little bit quiet, um, so which is fine. There's a lot of great quiet leaders, so he's not really outspoken, but um, he's a phenomenal listener and spends a lot of time with our players, listening and helping them. So it's just kind of a different way to lead maybe than most people think. But I know our players respect him a lot for that. What do you want more? When you have a guy like, like Quinn Chun who had such a special season and all that, what kind of jump do you want him to make in terms of his own personal improvement, not just for himself, but also for you to utilize him in the offense? Uh, but we're past protection.
direction, things that a lot of times as a freshman, you're so focused on just getting the ball and running well. Um, the details of the game, decided that Kevin Smith's back here to work with him, um, having had such a great career playing the position and coached so many guys. So um, I think that's been a really good situation. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Thanks.